So WPA uh, 3 came out in 2018. Oh. Uh, so yeah, not not that long ago, but considering the pandemic and everything, it feels like a, like a lifetime ago. Um, so uh, the Wi-Fi Alliance announced, Wi-Fi Alliance announced that WPA 3, it was going to replace WPA 2. And immediately, one of my friends, Matthew Van Hoff, came out with a paper talking about the vulnerabilities of WPA3. So uh, the reason why WPA3 is supposed to be better is it does a couple of things that WPA does, uh, WPA2 does not do. One of them is it's able to uh, protect someone that picks a bad password. So it uses um, like a elliptic curve cryptography, which is computationally more expensive, but it also means that if somebody picks a bad password, it's not as easy to brute force it. And it means that in theory, it should be harder for you picking a bad password to allow someone to break into your network. The, the attack against a bad password and a good password should be pretty expensive for an attacker in this case. There's also a, a problem with WPA2 where if somebody connects to uh, your network and just starts, oh, sorry, if somebody listens in on your network and stores the traffic and later on learns the Wi-Fi network password, it means that they would be able to go back and decrypt all of the traffic that they had collected, which is really bad. Uh, with WPA3, they have supposedly solved this, which in theory means that you're supposed to have what's called forward secrecy. Uh, in, and in cryptography, forward secrecy is a feature uh, that means the keys will not be compromised, even if the long-term secrets used in the session key are compromised. So that means that your messages from the point before a hacker got access to that key um, would be secure. So even if messages afterwards were not, at least all that traffic that they had gathered before couldn't be decrypted and really used. So there's a lot of features here that make WPA3 really popular. And that's why a lot of people are trying to move to it. But it is heavier and there are a lot of attacks against it. One of the most popular attacks against WPA3 is simply exploiting the fact that it's a much heavier protocol. So because um, it's now doing this elliptic curve cryptography and it takes up a lot of resources, that means it's actually pretty easy to just like crash the router by sending it a bunch of requests. Um, there's other ways of doing this to basically flood it with traffic, but one of the simplest attacks against WPA3 that I saw was just running the device out of resources because edge devices like routers or, or um, networking devices tend to not be like super powerful computers. You know, they're not like built to game. They're more like um, barely, barely what they need to do the job that they have. So if you start asking them to do other things like calculating a bunch of encryption keys all, uh, all at once, you can overwhelm a WPA3 device and cause it to basically not have enough memory or not have enough resources to properly authenticate devices that are trying to connect. So to me, that's kind of funny because, you know, the hackers just looked at how secure this algorithm was and was like, wow, that probably takes a lot of uh, computational power. And then by finding ways of just forcing you know, the router or a, another networking device to spend all that energy on computation, they can actually take it out of action by using up all its resources and preventing it from actually uh, like uh, routing it. So if you're interested in this attack, um, you should check out Matthew Van Hoff. Yep, here we go. So this was one of the um, first attacks against the handshake protocol for WPA3, Dragon Blood, attacking the Dragonfly handshake of WPA3. And what was cool about this is this attack actually affected um, the the way that this protocol was designed in the like in the future. So after receiving this feedback, we'll call it from Matthew. Um, there was uh, some things added to WPA3 in the next version that was released that allows it to resist these sorts of attacks. So all the juicy details, exactly how many times you would have to flood it, like what types of uh, attacks work, all that information is discussed here.